AWS Loft Talks. My talk is going to be a little bit more tech focused. I'm the infrastructure guy at Yellowhammer Media Group. So first I'm going to kind of go over what Yellowhammer is and then give you a business problem that we had and how we used virtual private clouds to solve it. Yellowhammer, I guess, would be best classified as a trading desk. And the business need that we have is a solution called dynamic creative optimization. And essentially what that does is it, it delivers a custom creative advertising advertisement solution to specific users based off of the data from specific bids that we've done off of advertising exchange advertising exchanges. Um, and the proximity to the specific end user uh, affects our ability to uh, deliver quicker, right? So um, we essentially ran into a series of problems where we had um, in one region um, one virtual private cloud and we spun up another virtual private cloud in a completely different region, um, but the two VPCs could not effectively communicate for us to get data from one region to another. Um, and this allows us to kind of gauge how, successfully a how successful a certain creative ad is. Um, and we're currently running these virtual private clouds in three regions, um, the east, the west, and in Brazil. When I first started with Yellowhammer, we were exclusively on EC2 Classic, and we needed to make the transition to VPC fairly quickly. The reason for that was because we wanted to have security associated with specific subnets, um, and to be able to spin up servers in these subnets fairly quickly. In our East region, we have a series of servers that are necessary for us to spin up servers in other regions. We have an LDAP server that we use to um, provision users on servers. We have Graphite that we use to um, respond back for bids and how successful some of our bids are. Um, and we also use Nagios for um, for monitoring, server monitoring. Um, in these specific regions, though, we didn't want to put every single server in the region, right? So we wanted to have one base region, which would be the East region, um, and everything from every other region would report back to that. Well, the problem is, is that some of these servers are in private subnets, and they're not exposed directly to other servers and other subnets in other regions, right? So the solution that, that uh, my team came up with was um, VPN tunnels between the virtual private clouds. Um, AWS doesn't natively give you um, communication mechanisms between virtual private clouds in completely different regions. They do in different... Um, availability zones, but not in regions. So um, we kind of hit a, a bit of a brick wall when it came to um, determining how successful certain things were in different regions. We needed to be able to, to pull that information securely back off of another region. Um, we did that with an open VPN server in each specific region. It connects back to the base region, which is the east region, um, and that's essentially how we were able to tunnel everything back through, through to the east. Um, we did this through uh, routing tables um, on each region, so that that way we, we, we actually had to manually add the network ID for each server, so that way we, it would know to go back to this direction based off of the network addresses, if that makes any sense. Right? So if you spin up servers in the east coast, with um, network addresses of 10.2.0.0, and in the west coast you have 10.3.0.0, the routing table will know to send it to the east coast if you're looking for a machine on 10.2.0.0.0. Right. Obviously the issues that we ran into were if the VPN tunnels went down, um, we wouldn't know what was happening in a specific region and specific coast or whatever was, was occurring. Um, so we had to set up Nagios monitoring to make sure that the tunnels stayed up and then redundancy with those tunnels to make sure if one open VPN server failed, the other one would pick up the traffic. Um, this was actually fairly difficult because um, in the routing tables you can't necessarily have multiple routes for the same network address, if that makes sense. One of the issues that we had was whenever we decide to go into a completely different region, we need to be able to spin up VPCs and we need to have this architecture run really, really quickly. And we leverage Rundeck as, um, as our main source of, of being able to spin up servers and spin up subnets and spin up virtual private clouds.
AWS Loft Talks.